Hi guys, and welcome to the video. So as you've probably noticed, the video isn't gonna to be too long if you looked at the timestamp. Just doing a quick one here tonight or whatever time it is for you when you're watching. I'm guessing it's night, I don't know. But we're just gonna be going quickly over the advantages and disadvantages of each Optiplex, the 7020 and the 5020, and why one may be more appealing than the other if you're trying to get into gaming or build a budget gaming PC out of an Optiplex. Because even though one may be more appealing than the other, it's not going to be what you expect. So let's get straight into it, starting off with the Dell Optiplex 7020. Okay, now we have the Dell Optiplex 7020 directly in front of us. It's definitely the less appealing system at the start. It's bigger, it's bulkier, it probably doesn't look as professional as the 5050. But as you'll see, if you just want a quick answer, this is what I'd recommend instead of the 5050. But opening it up, the system, sorry about this one being kind of dusty, the system has an i7-3770 in there, or this CPU right here, and I have a GTX 1650 installed in here. You don't have to install a GTX 1650 if you're getting, if you're getting this. Um, it's really not the only card you can have. This drive bay, you can drill it out with a drill, it's really simple, and you can install pretty much any length card you have, you want right there. Like a Founders Edition 3070 is about this long. If you just remove that hard drive cage, you're going to be just fine. But um, it's got 16 gigs of RAM. It comes pre-installed with two 8-gig sticks, 240-watt power supply. So if you're starting off, you're going to be perfect with a 1650, a 1050, or a 1050 Ti. Or maybe even a 1660 or 1650 Super if you're lucky and can get your hands on one, which right now it's not that hard. They're still around 100 bucks, which is a pretty darn good deal. And this one has a 24-pin power connector, so that's pretty good. That means you don't need to get any special kind of adapter to put any new power supply in it. I originally started on a Dell Optiplex 7020. I swapped out the power supply for a 600 watt, and I put a GTX 970 in there before upgrading to a GTX 1070. This one comes with a one terabyte hard drive, but they normally come with 500 gigabyte hard drives. This also comes with two DVD drives. I unplugged one because they're useless. Um, there, as you can tell, there's also a lot more space in here. And Dell uses actual like good coolers on these older ones. Same on the 5050, so that doesn't really matter. And it has four RAM slots, so there's plenty of upgradability. On Dell's website, it says that the maximum amount of RAM per slot in this computer is eight gigs per slot, so then that equals 30 gigs overall. But I have easily put up to 128 gigabytes of RAM in one of these systems and been perfectly fine, no problems. So don't trust Dell on that. There's a slight bit of proprietariness to this motherboard. You might need an adapter for power and stuff, but other than that, it's a good upgradable motherboard and you can put a lot of stuff in it. But now that we're done with that, let's get to the Dell Optiplex 5050. Okay, now here in front of us, we have the Dell Optiplex 5050, which is automatically the more appealing choice on the list if you have to choose between these two and Optiplexes, but you'll quickly learn it's not. But it comes pre-installed with 16 gigs of RAM, just like the previous Dell Optiplex, an i5-7500, which you may think it's newer than the i7-3770. It must be faster. No, it is in fact not. This i5-7500 will not outperform the i7-3770. So, thinking about that, we can now open up the system, which instead opens up in a much more annoying way with this latch on the back that doesn't even work well. Then you can pull off the side panel, and then you can see a very crowded interior where you have to start off by pulling out the hard drive bay, which can only support one drive unless you spend like 20 bucks on another adapter to put in another drive which it only supports small SSDs and HDDs, and it comes with 500 gigs. And you also may notice it comes pre-installed with two graphics cards. Now, they're both two gig cards. They're AMD HD 5450s, which you think, oh, two, two gig cards added together. That must be four gigs. That's going to be good, right? No, it's not. Number one, these two cards are both DDR3, which is horrible. You want at least DDR5 or DDR6 when you're gaming. This 1650 uses DDR5 VRAM, 4 gigs, and these use 2 gigs of DDR3 each, which don't combine, so technically you're only using 2 gigs of DDR3, so it's pretty much just a dis display adapter. And you can see it's also really crowded in the system. It has a much more shallow cooler, and it has a proprietary connector and a weird power supply, which means less upgradability in the future because you can't change the power supply. And pulling out our graphics cards to put in the 1650, let's get that done real quick. 
we can see uh, that there's also not much space here for a graphics card because Dell didn't have that in mind. So if we make sure this is lined up, then pull out the second slot cover, which instead of being fully removable like the Dell Optiplex, this one's permanent until you remove it, and you can't pull it back out again. But after we have our 1650 in here, let me line it up. We have it put in, and we can see how there is not much space for anything else in this system, and it just barely closes with the 1650 in there, meaning you can't really upgrade anything else. So you're going to be stuck with a low-end system that you can't upgrade over time. So you're stuck with a 1650 and 7500, unless you upgrade to an i7-7800 or 7800K, where you'll have a faster CPU, but that won't outmatch the fact that you can use up to like an RTX 3060 with the i5, I mean the i7-3770, and you'll have better performance than i5, I mean i7-7800 and 1650, which makes the Dell Optiplex 7020 much faster than this in comparison. So now that we've seen that, we can close up this system and get to our final conclusion. Okay, now we're in the conclusion of the video. So which one would I recommend overall? You already know, it's gonna be the Dell Optiplex 7020. But just because I'm hating on the Dell Optiplex 5050 so much doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it. If you can't get a, your hands on a Dell Optiplex 7020 and you can only get one in like a 5050, by all means, go for it. If you have the correct GPU that fits in it, like a 1650, maybe some extra RAM or an i7-8700 and you're only doing light gaming, this will be perfect for you, a nice small system. But overall, if you want to get into gaming and like upgrade more until you have something like my main rig right here, which this is exactly what I did. I started with a Dell Optiflex 7020 and upgraded it to what I have now. This is an amazing way to start. So like, I'd go with the 7020, but the 5050 isn't a bad option. But thanks for watching this little short and sweet video about the Dell Optiplex 5050 versus 7020. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Maybe there will be another. Oh, I can't talk. Maybe there will be another video that involves Dell Optiplexes. You'll see that in the future. And also, I got a microphone. But thanks for watching. Bye.